First and foremost, I truly don't care if you do or don't believe in Bigfoot. I am simply reviewing a piece of media that happens to focus on Bigfoot. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Small Entertainment. And I spend probably too much time looking for things to watch and not enough time watching actual things. I have a lot of things that people tell me I should watch, uh, but lately I have this thing where I have this uh, violent need to not watch things that people are telling me to watch um, or things that are popular at that moment. I don't know why I have that and frankly I need to get rid of that considering a good chunk of my content is reviewing media. If a movie or show is new and not obscure, then if I make a video on it, it'll only do well if I do it within a week of that thing coming out. Oh, my life is so difficult as a YouTuber. But I was browsing Hulu looking for things to watch to waste time so I didn't have to watch other things that I was being told to watch. And I came across a very interesting Bigfoot documentary. I am no stranger to Bigfoot documentaries. I am no stranger to paranormal or horror documentaries or uh, shows of that nature. For me, it doesn't matter if it's for business or for a vacation. I don't think that any hotel stay is complete unless at least some point I watch either reruns of Deadliest Catch or some weird Bigfoot show. You can have whatever opinions you want of cryptids, aliens, uh, the paranormal. Personally, I think that a healthy dose of skepticism is important in all things. I think asking questions is important, um, but also I'm not naive enough to think that we are the most intelligent beings out there or that we are the only intelligent life forms out there because we're never gonna be able to explore all corners of space. It's just not going to happen. We haven't even explored all of our oceans. Do I personally think that Bigfoot, big feet, the Bigfoots are real? Um, probably not, logically speaking. Um, but I do think that uh, it's mostly harmless when someone does believe that Bigfoot is real. But when I was scrolling through Hulu and I saw the poster for Bigfoot Girl, I gave pause. A woman in I think a tank top and she's kind of posed in an unnatural position with a Bigfoot behind her in the wilderness. What does the poster make you think of? because I thought this was gonna be some erotic Bigfoot movie. I was not expecting to hit play and then watch the most confusing documentary I've ever seen on a streaming service. The synopsis is after encountering Bigfoot as a child, Kiana instantly felt a connection with the creature. With the help of other experiencers, she sets out to secret locations with recent sightings to find closure to the biggest question of her life. I love watching documentaries, okay? I like meeting interesting people and I also like watching interviews. I like watching um, different deeper looks into events in history, people, things like that. I like watching documentaries. I have no idea why there is a belief among some people that a documentary style film is easy to do. This is a very disjointed, confusing documentary in that I don't know if they've ever watched one before or I don't know if the people making this uh, knew exactly what they wanted to do with this documentary. It's one thing to go out and have a plan of how you're gonna go out there and investigate Bigfoot and meet all these people, do all these interviews. It's one thing to have a plan for that, not really know what's important and what's not, to the point that they had whole shots that were just one single camera shot with no cuts, with things that are completely irrelevant or completely don't make sense in the context. I don't know what's going on and it's confusing and I felt like I was being blue balled by a documentary about Bigfoot. They kept, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Okay, hang on, um, before I go on, I also like that the synopsis is like, they're going to secret locations and then the first thing that uh, Kiana tells us, we are going to Campbell River in British Columbia. Super secret. <laughs> so Kiana Passmore is our narrator and our Bigfoot girl. That's one of the first things she says to us when she steps into frame. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kiana, and I am Bigfoot Girl. Now, I have never heard of this girl, okay? And uh, looking her up, apparently she's an actor. She's done uh, several films. Her interviews about uh, Bigfoot Girl, this is honestly a passion project that she wanted to do, and she just wanted people to be more open-minded about what they found. 
I have watched this documentary uh, three times now. I still don't know what they found, but we'll get there. But according to her, she really did have this experience and that's why she calls herself Bigfoot Girl. Um, although I can't find any other record of her calling herself Bigfoot Girl. Personally, if I was gonna give myself a nickname, like I have a lot of experiences from when I was a kid of uh, ghost sightings. Uh, could it have just been my parents arguing pre-divorce? Absolutely. But if I was going to give myself the nickname Ghost Girl, you bet your ass I would market the fuck out of that, okay? I would have t-shirts, I would have a, a podcast. Would I have my own show? No, that's too easy, too standard. I would make sure I was a guest on every single paranormal show that there was out there. Ghost Girl coming to help us out. We have a special guest today with us, Ghost Girl. I would milk it for all that it was worth. Um, Kiana, I don't know what you've done with Bigfoot Girl uh, other than this documentary, and I have no idea what titling it as Bigfoot Girl does for the documentary, considering you are in it, you have made yourself a big uh, part of this documentary, but I don't know what the significance of what happens in the documentary has to the title of Bigfoot Girl. It just doesn't meld properly. Kiana introduces us to James Tyson. It's the weirdest introduction of one of your head researchers or head people in your excursion uh, I've ever seen in a documentary in that he is standing in the wilderness just looking off in the distance and then Kiana walks up like hi like they're meeting for the first time and then she's asking him a couple questions and he's just basically giving his full LinkedIn history apparently he saw ghosts as a kid he worked with the paranormal investigation team he uh, was a mountain police he did a radio show uh, he kept bringing that up a uh, bunch of stuff but this introduction of James is just one steady shot it's very odd. Cut to anything. B-roll. Something. Okay. Anything that proves that like what he's talking about is real. Okay. Uh, he was a mountain police. Okay. Surely there's footage of him or something or photos of him in his uniform. Anything that proves that this is legitimate. History working with a ghost hunting crew. Surely there's something attached to that because why else would you be in a ghost hunting crew unless you're going to document it? Let's be real. You know, like there, there's stuff he's talking about that have totally easy ins for them to insert B-roll and they just don't. It's just very off-putting. Like I feel like I'm bored watching it, but also I feel like I'm invading on a weird conversation that doesn't seem like they even tried to do a second take. Then we're cut into a uh, very intense delivered intro from James. Let's go and see what we can find. What is Bigfoot, Sasquatch? Why was this not the intro to the whole documentary? Like cut everything out with Kiana in the beginning. Like maybe introduce yourself as Bigfoot girl. Don't need to know who James is and his background. We can add that in later because that's what they do with Kiana. Like they don't tell us why Kiana has the name of Bigfoot girl, why she's invested in Bigfoot. Waited for Kiana, why not wait for James? Like we don't, and also half of what James told us is totally irrelevant. But in the very intense speech that James does with very ominous music, he tells us that they're going to listen to many people's experiences and why they are tagging along on this expedition to find if Bigfoot is real. I just wanted it on the record that that was a pretty good impression. But anyway, main issues with this documentary from a Bigfoot investigation documentary standpoint. Yes, that is a standpoint and I am taking it. They don't have a skeptic. And I'm not talking about TV skeptics. Okay, someone who's just paid to be a devil's advocate, but they actually like kind of sort of believe what's going on. Like I don't, we don't want that. I'm talking about someone who is only going on the trip because they like camping and you said you were gonna buy the beer. That is the type of person I'm talking about. Someone who's like, fuck you, why do you think Bigfoot is real? When you're doing an excursion like this with a goal in mind of like, hey, we're gonna try and find evidence of Bigfoot, you need someone there who is logically minded and logically not going to link everything that you experience, hear, or see and link it to evidence of Bigfoot. It may not be fun for you to have that person there, but I truly think that for documentaries like this or shows like this, you need someone who's just completely simply there, logically minded, who is, has no investment into you actually finding the thing you were looking for. Kiana is heading over to Campbell River with her chunk of the crew. I'm not understanding the, the bits of crew. Uh, I still don't understand how that all worked out because they explain it in the worst way possible. But as they're on the ferry going towards Campbell River, uh, Kiana tells us why she believes in Bigfoot and why this is important to her. And basically when she was six, she and her father would go and like explore the woods. That was our thing. And they both saw something that 
I'll, I'll put it here. Out of the blue, I see it. You can't explain it. It's not an ape and it's not a human. It's like a mixture of those two, but in such a large form and it doesn't look human. That is why she truly wants to find some type of evidence of Bigfoot because she wants to make sense of what she saw. Why did we need the opening bit with James? I really don't understand why we needed his whole resume because they certainly never mentioned that Kiana is an actress. The score alone on this is very interesting because they have this very ominous, foreboding, menacing score, these menacing music over these scenes of them happily hugging and meeting up, um, everyone sharing their very hopeful stories of uh, wanting to see Bigfoot or why they believe in Bigfoot. Um, and some of the stories are, yes, a little darker and not darker, but just like a little more uh, concerning, you know, and how they are presented. Uh, but even then, the people are saying them, it's like, yeah, I, I still really want to see Bigfoot. I, I'm excited to see Bigfoot. Like, they're all very hopeful. So I don't know why they're using this music to kind of foreshadow this horrible thing happening because nothing ever happens. This is Thomas Seawood. He is my favorite person in this documentary. He's great. Um, mainly I like him because though he clearly seems to believe what he's talking about, he clearly believes in Bigfoot, the big fellas as he referred to them as, uh, but he's also very, I would say, practical, very realistic about uh, what will happen or what could happen if humans actually start mingling with Bigfoot. Quit gifting to those creatures. And when you do have your Diane Fossey, Jane Goodall moment, make sure you have a face mask on, make sure you've sanitized yourself because God forbid, we don't want to give them our filthy rotten diseases that we have. Use your frontal lobe, show that it's well developed. Thomas Seawood was about that mask life before it was cool and common courtesy. <laughs> but one of the main reasons I love that Thomas Seawood is in this documentary, he just starts casually disproving everything that they think is evidence of Bigfoot as nature. <laughs> it's fantastic. The fact that they kept this scene in there is insane. They introduce this one random couple who, as far as I can see, are not involved in this excursion whatsoever, but they interview this random couple about their experience in 1990 where they believe they saw Bigfoot in the same area. Unless I miss something, this is the only part of the documentary where they do a reenactment. And these two people playing the reenactors do not look like these two people whatsoever. It's kind of funny, but this is why you see in a lot of uh, true crime documentary shows or anything like that where they do reenactments, an actor who is only like the same hair color and then maybe the same height as the actual living person and then their face is completely blurred out or something or they're just out of focus. So it's like, yeah, you're close enough. But the story doesn't fully make sense because basically what these people are saying is that they, uh, he was taking her on a date to go see these hot springs somewhere up there and he wanted to take her to go into the hot springs, but they weren't prepared for the cold weather, and they met some people that were on a ski-doo, or a snowmobile, and they brought them further out. And then as they passed the gate to go to the hot springs, they saw Bigfoot. Bigfoot started coming towards them. He grabbed her, and they started running back to their truck, because apparently they had a car there with them, even though the snowmobile had taken them there. But also in the reenactment, they are in totally full snow gear. But again, this is a reenactment and there's actual snow there when they're doing the reenactment. But I don't fully understand why showing this particular story um, and doing this particular reenactment was uh, relevant to the actual story of when they're going, considering when uh, Tracy and Steve experienced this. It was like clearly in the winter, at least when they were snowing, uh, and they're not going when it's snowing. So, uh, like maybe it's the same area, but the conditions are not the same. So I do not get the uh, relevance of showing this story. It does not pertain to what actually is going on in the documentary. I'm filming this voiceover because when I was actually filming this video, I was still confused, but also kind of piecing together what they tried to achieve with the traveling to the location for the actual overnight excursion. I was fairly certain that uh, James was with uh, Thomas Seawood 
and then um, Kiana was somewhere else, okay? She doesn't appear to be in the shots with any of them. Uh, she's in completely different gear, completely different shoes than everyone else. Everyone else is in cold weather gear. She's in like a poncho and like fashion boots, clearly different past. And the entire time as Kiana is narrating, she is talking about how uh, my group decided to press on. We were lost, but we weren't sure where we were supposed to be going. But then when they first introduced Thomas Seawood. So we just met up with Thomas Seawood and he's gonna be taking us the area of Campbell River, where he's had experience with Bigfoot. And this is before they embark on their journey to go to where they're spending the night. And so James is definitely with Thomas because they are seen in the car together. Now it looks like Kiana is in the car with them, but they're never in the same frame. So I really have no idea if they were ever in the car together. I'm fairly certain that everything they filmed for Kiana is just B-roll that they filmed later. It needed something to pad the running time. So they kept saying that they were getting lost or they decided to press on because as far as I can see, there's no reason for why they should be separated. And there's also nothing indicating that they're actually lost. She just keeps saying that they're lost. But anyway, they end up back at camp. And yes, this took too long to get to. So we're here at Thomas Seawood's camp. Uh, it was a definitely a long hike to get here. We actually got lost for quite a while, uh, but we actually caught up with James and the rest of the crew, which was good. And then they just make it to what they refer to as Thomas Seawood's uh, secret hideaway. Like, like there's no conclusion to them being lost or how they got lost even in the first place. It's just like, okay, we're here now. Like, what is going on? But I'm already halfway through this documentary. They have just gotten to the location of where they're going to spend the night to try and find evidence of Bigfoot, and it is halfway through this documentary. What? Everything that I have talked about and explained so far, unless someone broke their leg on the journey over, this should not have taken you half of your documentary to get to the actual location of where you were doing your investigation. This should have taken you maybe a max of 20 minutes. Kiana, again, I don't, I think she had a much easier time getting over there than they're trying to make it seem. They don't show them taking the same path that James did and the rest of the crew did. So I don't know what the hell she's talking about, but none of this makes sense. Oh, I should really point out uh, in all of the uh, interviews that they do in like this like curtain area that they uh, did all the uh, dark shadowed interviews, in the background there is the shittiest silhouette of a Bigfoot I have ever seen. What? What is that? Oh, it's supposed to be Bigfoot looking over them. Like it's Bigfoot looming over them in the interview. It's very funny. I think this blonde woman's name is Ashley. She tells us like, oh, James's psychic friend told us to bring cherries. So we're tying cherries in the trees. We are putting cherries out. Can anyone who's a Bigfoot expert corroborate that? I've never heard of that. I am no stranger to Bigfoot content. I have never heard of Bigfoot liking cherries. It's the most obscure thing. Why is the psychic not involved in this if this psychic has so much Bigfoot knowledge? The cherries are never brought up again, aside from at the end where apparently uh, Thomas Seawood, when they told him about doing the cherries, they laughed and said that they once had a cooler out and someone had come and only taken the cherries and closed the cooler and they thought it was Bigfoot. That is the only significance that the cherries seem to have. As far as I can see, they never talk about the cherries being gone. I'm gonna speed through the rest of this because they show them putting up what looks to be wilderness cameras, hunting cameras, outdoor cameras of some sort to trees. Later, they mentioned that they did this. They also mentioned that they put out listening devices and all of that. We never see that footage. We don't. Uh, the night that they go to sleep, we do see a bit of uh, night vision, shitty night vision uh, footage. Uh, but even Kiana in the voiceover is like, we thought we just saw shadows. We thought it was Bigfoot, but it was just our own crew members or shadows. And, and that's it. We never see uh, any of the wilderness footage. We hear any of the audio that they claim they got, despite the fact that the one thing that everyone seemed to talk about is that they kept hearing certain audio. They kept hearing certain sounds. They kept hearing something with like a, um, a banging or a clanking of some sort. And one of them kept saying they kept hearing a hoot that they believed was definitely not an owl, but they never play that audio so that you, the viewer, can be the judge of what that audio actually is. They never play that. I feel like I'm being blue balled with Bigfoot evidence because they don't show any of the evidence, but they talk about it. It's like, I have so much more questions. I feel like I learned a lot. What did you learn? I don't know. I'm so lost. Like I'm being teased. There's like, you're talking about it, but there's nothing. They find what looks to be a footprint 
in the uh, in the brush, okay? And it's so deep in the pine needles that James is like, uh, I couldn't do this, a human couldn't do this. So he makes a cast, first time making a cast in pine needles. And it's like, okay, you're already setting this up to not look like a fucking footprint when you pull it out. And then he's like, now don't be surprised if I pull this out and it doesn't look like a footprint. And I swear to God, they never show what the cast looks like. They never show it. They talk about that footprint. They said, we saw all these other footprints, but they only ever showed that footprint. And it's driving me freaking insane. It's like, I, I like, this is me trying to get to five pages on an essay. I'm just putting words that don't make sense and hoping that no one looks deeper. Like, I, I this must be what my professors used to feel like. Oh my God. Favorite interaction. Uh, this is Thomas Seawood, and I think Ashley is the blonde again. I'm not sure, but the blonde is talking about her sounds that she heard and uh, there, the sounds that she heard were exactly what Kiana had said she heard, which is some type of clanging, um, some type of knocking. We're at the fire, I did hear something. Um, sound like tree, like um, something breaking, like a log breaking or something getting stepped on. But I mean, it could have just been... Branch falling. Yeah. And you know, you got to remember with the higher tide last night too, the wood, k-tunk, and before dark, there was some driftwood floating in the bay. Mm -hmm. So when they hit the beach, you know, and then we had cruise ships going by and they yeah. a hell of a clunking noise. So then Ashley is like, oh, okay, well, you know, like when you have a, a bottle and you blow into a bottle, like, like you, that shit, like a hooting is what she essentially says. And so Thomas Seawood says, there's owls around too. You know, you always gotta, but it's, like, I've heard an owl before. I've heard owls. It's like the, some... It sounded more ape-like. Certain people that I would not argue with about certain things, okay? Thomas Seawood, who lived there for years, okay? Spent a good chunk of his life living there in the wilderness with the sounds of the wilderness, with the sounds of the wild animals in that area. I am not going to argue with a man like Thomas Seawood about what a fucking owl sounds like. And he's not doing it to be malicious. Like he's not being a skeptic. He's not slamming her down. He's just being like, well, it could be that because he has lived in that area. If anyone is going to be confident in what they're talking about for Bigfoot, it's going to be Thomas Seawood because he is familiar with all of the wildlife and the sounds that they make in that area. He is confident that what he has heard that he attributes to Bigfoot is not any of those sounds based on what he's told us. So if you go to Thomas Seawood and you say, hey, here's what I heard, I think this was Bigfoot, and he tells you actually that's the sounds that all the owls out here make, you, you you listen to that. I'm, I'm so... <laughs> That's it. He just disproves everything that they're talking about. I should clarify, they do hold up the cast at one point, but it's still covered in pine needles. It only vaguely looks like a foot. Like, you, you like, really can't say anything. But Kiana is narrating this point, and she's like, my disappointment was overshadowed by the footprint that we found. But listen, Kiana is never shown in the footage with anyone else of their investigators. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not entirely sure that she was there. I don't think she was there. She narrates everything, but she's not in the footage with anyone else. When she's talking about her experience, she's in the dark. She is clearly leaned up against one of the huts at one point, but easily she could have gone at a different point. I don't know if she was actually on this same trip with everyone else because she's never shown with them. It's very weird. She's not in any of the group shots, none of that. So then they end the trip and then we're back to Kiana and James talking about their findings. And their findings are again, not shown. They don't show footage. They don't show the other footprints. They don't show it. They talk about it. They talk about that knocking sound. Again, that Thomas C. Wood explained away. They talk about the hooting. Uh, the hooting, uh, that definitely wasn't an owl. Mm. Unless they have uh, owls with lips up there. I know I have tiny white girl lips, but how do you hoot? Hoot. Like, like, hoot. like, what the fuck is he talking about? Unless it is lips. Poot? Like, poot? Like, what the fuck is he talking about? What does that mean? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm giving this too much credit, but I, I was watching this originally and losing my mind at like 11 o'clock at night. Anyway, that's the end of the documentary and I feel like I've been edged for 120 minutes with Bigfoot information. Like, I'm so confused. I'm, I don't feel good about watching this. Like, it feels wrong. It feels frustrating. Like, it feels unfinished. But also, like, I feel like if you gave this to like a high school uh, film teacher, they would have given this like a B for some reason and I don't know why. Anyway,
anyway, that's going to be it. What's a Bigfoot documentary that you liked? Uh, or do you like any paranormal uh, cryptid investigation shows? What's one that you like? Have you ever been on a Bigfoot excursion? Um, is Thomas Seawood also your favorite in this story? Let me know. Comment down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, that'll be linked down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. G <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>so many of you are gonna come and like why are you getting so worked up about this like did you want bigfoot evidence and it's like no i i don't care either way truly um but i i if you're gonna tell me that you have something show me the thing that you have you know don't just like dangle it like a carrot and then talk about it like you showed it like you have definitive proof and then don't didn't show me that's annoying thank you elaine allen elise Braden, cameron christopher chris cody colton crash pc devin dirty one don elliot aaron s and evan feckless finnegan hopeless jason joe john m jordan joseph kenny kevin kim Kristen, lex lisa manga matt matthew s me more the red michael michael j nathaniel pat palak rob robert ross sam simon stefan tasha timothy tom tyrone wayne wendy william zendry